So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Today we have a weird comparison, iPhone 15 Pro Max versus iPad Pro M2. Yeah, I know it's a little bit weird, but here's the thing, boys and girls. The iPhone 15 Pro Max 3.2, we're gonna boot this up, 3.2, Go. The iPhone 15 Pro Max has the Apple A17 Pro chipset and it's three nanometer. The M2 series is a really powerful CPU as well. Um, and I just want to see how they compare. You know, sometimes I actually have the thought, should I just get an iPad over the iPhone? And the M2 boots up faster than that of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Also, you might be thinking about having these two as your companions. You just want to see how they perform next to each other. Okay guys, so when it comes to Face ID, what I love about the iPhone is that the Face ID is within the dynamic island and it kind of looks like has a nice animation, but I love that the iPad Pro also has Face ID, unlike some of the other iPads that use fingerprints. So I find it very convenient and very nice to use day to day, but we're just here talking about some of the basics here. You'll see iPhone 15 Pro Max with its 120 Hertz promotion. It basically started on the iPad. so iPad gets the credit for having promotion first and you kind of see it more just simply because you're looking at a bigger canvas so you can kind of see that smooth feel of the uh, iPad Pro M2. You can also see it on the iPhone but I just I just feel like my eyes are just visually more pleased looking at promotion on this larger display. It could just be me. Now when we're talking about the software we have iOS 17.1 on both of them. Well, they call it iPad OS, but it's essentially the same thing, just on a larger tablet. You'll see eight gigabytes of RAM, and the CPU is clocked in at 3.77 gigahertz. Over here for the iPad Pro M2, lower clock speed, and it looks like a little bit less available memory. So we're gonna have to see if that makes any difference in the actual performance. Okay guys, so we've arrived at the application test. You can see everything closed out for both devices. Let's go ahead and begin with calendar, and you can see that might have, was that the iPhone? They're, they're gonna be very close. Um, let me go ahead in the month view. Swipe up out of there. We'll go into clock. It's about the same. And the thing is, is that because the M2 is so powerful, you know, even though the iPad has to load up more content on screen, it should be able to give you, let's go to weather. It should be able to give you similar performance. You'll see much more displayed on the weather application over on the right. Let's go ahead and swipe up out of there. We'll go into App Store. And you'll see that's faster on the iPhone for sure. Games. I still think that the iPad that's faster on iPhone can still load up most of the time at a similar speed. Which one's gonna get it? This is the iPhone. So the iPhone so far a little bit faster. And let's see how this performs here. And you'll see pretty similar. You swipe up out. We'll go into Groupon. And Groupon is gonna go first here to the iPhone. I did this test yesterday before the speed test and the iPhone was actually losing, so I don't know what's up with that. You'll see about the same. This was actually faster, I think, on the iPad. Let's go back to those categories and let's go to beauties and spas. Yeah, maybe faster there on the iPad. We'll go into food and drink. And we'll see, yeah, faster on the iPad. So that M2, it's warming up now. You'll see faster, maybe about the same, Instagram. And you'll see just about even. We'll go over here. So these these products in conjunction, like if you want to build them out as your ecosystem, they would be a really nice combo. Let's go into Twitter or X. And you'll see that's going to be faster on the left. Now maybe this application takes a little bit more because you do have to load up more content. Let's go into the eBay right here and we'll go to eBay and see how this performs. And you'll see that's gonna be faster on the right. And let's go into Apple Store. Now oh, my heater just kicked on so we're getting a little bit of background noise, just ignore it. You'll see there on the left, so maybe now loading up a little more content. I mean, I still would rather use the iPads operation though because like it's more to see so operating the iPad, I get to see more, especially if you're at home. So if you're somebody who works from home or something like that, or you're just at home a lot, the iPad is probably the better choice. Let's go into play, especially the iPad Pro 11 or the mini or even the base iPads. That was faster than iPad. Gaming is much larger. 
Smooth factor is about the same, but no, there's no dynamic island, no interruptions. Although the bezels are getting quite thick here in 2023, I would like to see a reduction there just to make it a little more slick looking on the next iPad. Let's go into, which app are we in? Dead Trigger 2? Let's go into Subway Surfers now, three, two, and go. And you're gonna see that Subway Surfers is gonna go first to the right over there. And yeah, so yeah, the A17 Pro chip, while amazing, not as much heat to disperse or area to disperse heat. So it warms up more than an iPad Pro. And while the M2 is clearly a more powerful processor, more than likely the you know, the performance is showing that they're pretty close to the same. You could see in Temple Run 2, what are we getting here? Okay, faster on the left. Yeah, so I think this would be awesome. Like if you're using an iPhone 15 Pro Max, you have an iPad Pro, um, basically handing off between the two would be like you're using the same product, just one bigger, one smaller on the go. So a really good ecosystem combination. Let's go into Real Racing 3 and see which one could pop this open first. But of course, wouldn't you want to play games more on the iPad Pro M2? Let me know down below. Would you really rather play games on the iPhone, even if it's loading it a little bit faster here? I don't think so. Nah, nah, nah. No. No, 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 no. I'm playing it on the bigger screen. I don't care. Like, why would I play? I mean, we start, didn't we start gaming by plugging in Nintendos and you know, game cubes and then PS ones and Xboxes to screens and you know, portable gaming to me is never as fun as console gaming. Let's go into PUBG mobile here, three, two, go. But it can be fun if you start connecting controllers to things like the iPad. So do keep that in mind. You'd have controller support. Um, you do have controller support on the iPhone as well in certain games. So you, there's that. But Again, a phone's a phone. I'm gonna use the tablet for gaming and I'm gonna use a console e for even better gaming than using on a tablet. But that's debatable. Let me know your thoughts. What is your most preferred method of gaming? Faster here for the iPhone. The only issue is when you start getting up into those 12.9 inch based iPads, they're too big for you know mobile game controls. But this one's good. So we're going in the landscape because the iPad automatically defaults there. Let's go into, where were we? 3D Mark, 3D Mark here. And you'll see about the same iMovie, about the same again, camera, and pretty much the same Geekbench 6, faster on the right. The Geekbench 6 is still not loading properly fast on the iPhone yet. We're going to speedtest.net, and you'll see pretty close. So overall, I would say iPad won some, iPhone won some. Pretty much even though, this is almost like having an M-series chip in the iPhone with the A17 Pro chip. That's pretty cool, uh, pretty amazing actually for longevity as well. So we're gonna quickly run through the RAM management and you'll see, bang, everything's smooth. The iPhone has zero load issues even though it's not a 16 gig of RAM type of phone or even a 12 gig of RAM phone. This thing is the smoothest reload phone on the market period like there is phones that are maybe faster can hold more potentially but the iphone just looks the best there's just no there's no other way around it call me what you will and um, say say what you want the truth is is i've tested so many numerous phones and what i get is the same thing every time apple you're just smoother and they know it and that's why ios is proprietary to apple devices let's go over here to subway surfers and okay, I think I was either I was missing it or I was messing up. I don't know. Let me know. Was I missing it? Which one were we on? Was I missing it or was I messing up? Or was it messing up? Was the game messing up? Let me know down below. We're going to Instagram and Starbucks and Groupon and App Store, weather, clock, and calendar. No issues there either. Big old iPhone, bigger version of an iPhone. It's a blown up iPhone on the iPad Pro, basically. All right, so the iPad Pro finishes first, and that's a good sign for its score. Look at that multi-core score. Unbelievable. On the iPad Pro, over 10,000. This is on an iPad, have you? But look at that impressive single core on the iPhone. It says, shut up, Nick. Today, I am winning in what you basically test all the time. Single core. Not really pushing it too hard, daily applications. It looks like the iPhone might be the faster phone in that respect. Um, 2593 on a single core. This is super impressive for an iPhone device. Six core over here, eight core over here, it says right there. 
um, overall, basically, again, these scores are very similar. So, you know, you have a really top dog phone on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. We're going to go ahead and run the Wildlife Extreme. And I'll be back when they're done. But I got to just say, in terms of which one I think is the better experience, I think it's the iPad because the iPad has Apple Pencil. You can split the screen. It has the basically the Mac level processor inside of it. And it's the promotion, the, per, the thing that started the promotion. So it's buttery smooth in the same way. The only issue is I wish they would reduce the bezels. I know some people say you need bezels on a tablet, something to hold on to. That's a nice excuse, but Samsung doesn't do that with like the Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra. Some Surface tablets are thinner and they don't have accidental press issues. So that's not an excuse. I think Apple can reduce the bezels a little bit more on the next one to make it a sleeker, more desirable product. I'll be back when they're done with the 3D Mark test. Whoa, this is a crushing victory for the iPad Pro. Take a look at that score right there, 6217. This just makes me excited for the M3 series iPads and what they're gonna provide. 37 FPS on the frame rates, that is buttery. And when I was watching this, uh, it was so smooth. And you can see right there, your score is better than 97% of all other devices. So there's basically nothing faster than the iPad Pro. This might be one of the fastest computers on the market today in general. Uh, totally across the board of all mobile products. You can see right here, 3789, 22 FPS. You just can't game as fast as the iPad. You can see 88% and this heats up way more. Plus it's not as enjoyable um, with the display size. So we have our conclusion here. The iPhone just as fast in day-to-day -day applications. The iPad absolutely crushes the iPhone in graphic graphical performance, frame rates, you know, the CPU, I think, is just better on the iPad, hands down. Although the A17 is, is really amazing, probably better for AI and stuff like that. We'll have to see in the future. But the iPad's future is so bright with the way these chips are going. If they can just find ways to make it more desirable in terms of maybe updating the software, thinning the bezels, making maybe an OLED display, the iPad's future is very bright. Let me know your thoughts on these two down below in the comment section. If you like our iPad versus iPhone videos, or you want to see um, some maybe Samsung tablet versus iPad, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Nick here. Be sure to be well and have a great Sunday. Peace.